And today, we'll be using GitHub Actions to deploy a React app to S3 with a CloudFront distribution and a custom domain. In order to do this, the things you will need are an AWS account, a GitHub account, and a text editor of your choice. Now, let's jump into AWS and get started. Here we are in AWS, and what you'll need is a domain in Route 53 with a hosted zone that you have access to edit the DNS records for. Let's hop into Route 53 and see what that looks like. As you can see, I have one hosted zone in this AWS account for test.bananamere.com, and I have access to edit the records. If you don't have a domain that you can currently edit the DNS records for, you can purchase a domain from Route 53, and it should automatically create a hosted zone for you. Now, one of the first things that we want to do is create a certificate using AWS Certificate Manager so that we can have HTTPS on our site. In order to do that, we're going to go into Certificate Manager and request a certificate. Use Request a Public Certificate. And the fully qualified domain name is going to be test whatever your domain is in that hosted zone. And I'm going to add a wildcard so that it works for any service I want to use in the future as well. For validation method, we'll be using DNS validation. And this is so that we can allow AWS to validate ownership of the domain for us. And request. Wait for it to show up in your account. You should see pending validation. Let's go ahead and click on the certificate ID. And in the certificate ID, you should see create records in Route 53. Go ahead and click on that. Make sure all the information looks correct. And click create records. If it doesn't work the first time, it might just take a minute to fully register the certificate in AWS. You can back out, go back to list certificates, hit refresh, re-click the certificate ID, re-click create records in Route 53, and click create records. That should have created the DNS records, and we can validate that simply by opening up Route 53. Viewing our hosted zone, and seeing that the DNS record was created. Now we should be able to hop back to Certificate Manager, and see that this was issued. Great, now that that's done, the next thing we want to do is create an S3 bucket to store our resources. So let's hop over to S3 and create a bucket. You can name this whatever you want. I'll just leave it with test the man near front end. And we will actually be creating a private bucket for this, and that increases the security of our site slightly. We don't need to enable server-side encryption. You can if you would like. Here I'm not going to. And create your bucket. Perfect. Now that that's created, go ahead and click it. And just to make sure everything is, we're, we'll get everything set up correctly, we'll upload a dummy index.html file and upload. And once our upload is successful, we can go ahead and close this. And now our bucket 
is set up. The next thing we want to do is create a CloudFront distribution using the bucket and certificate that we just created. So let's hop over to CloudFront. On the CloudFront homepage, click Create a CloudFront Distribution. The origin domain, you want it to be the S3 bucket that you just created. There's no additional origin path. And we do want to use an OAI, or an origin access identity, to access the S3 bucket. So go ahead and click Yes, Use OAI. And we are going to let AWS create a new OAI for us. So just click Create. It should auto-populate. And we want to update the bucket policy. What this will do is it will allow CloudFront to access the resources in the bucket and serve it to our users. One additional setting that we need to change is towards the bottom. Uh, in the settings here, we need to add a custom domain. So I'm going to have um, frontend.test.bananamere.com. And the certificate is going to be test.bananamere.com. And the default root object is going to be index.html. If you don't provide this, you will get a an access denied error with your CloudFront distribution. Let's scroll back to the top, make sure it all looks good here. Main for the origin, that looks good. Looks good. Uh, we can select redirect HTTP to HTTPS because we are using the certificate to enable HTTPS on our website. Continue to verify that everything looks good. And we can go ahead and create the distribution. Now, this will take a few minutes. While this is working, we can copy this here. And then this alternate domain name that we use, we are going to create a DNS record with a C name pointing to this distribution domain name. So let's go ahead and open Route 53. We can check out our hosted zones. Let's go ahead and create our record for front end which will be a CNAME pointed to our CloudFront distribution. Go ahead and create the record. And now we should see it in here. Perfect. Let's see if our distribution is ready. Not quite yet. I'm going to pause the recording until the distribution is ready. We can now see that our distribution is done deploying. Let's try going to our site again. Perfect. We got what we were expecting. Now let's see if it works for our custom domain. Awesome. So now we have an S3 hosted site using CloudFront as the CDN and a custom domain pointing to the CloudFront distribution. And to verify that our site is secure, we can go to S3 and see that there is no public website access on the bucket. If you go to properties and scroll down, there's no static website hosting allowed. Perfect. Now that we verified everything is currently connected properly, 
We just need to create the GitHub Actions user and policy to allow GitHub Actions to deploy to our bucket. In order to do that, let's go into our IAM service and create a user. Add users. We will set the user detail or username as whatever you like. I will use front end GitHub actions. And we don't need this to have a password, we just need it to have programmatic access. We don't need to add the user to a current group or attach an existing policy. So just hit next, next review. No permissions is fine, create user. We will add permissions in the next step. Now you want to download the CSV, which will include the access key ID and secret access key, which will be required for the GitHub Actions to access our S3 bucket. Great. Go ahead and close. Now we need a policy to deploy to our S3 bucket. Go ahead and click on policies and create policy. We're going to go ahead and choose JSON. Go ahead and copy this over. And where it says bucket name, you want to replace it with the name of the bucket that you created. So let's go back to S3. Click on properties. And we want to copy this Amazon resource name here and actually just replace this entire thing with it. There we go. Perfect. Next, we can add some tags if you would like. Next review. Deploy run in app. That's all we need. and create your policy. Go back to your users. And for the user that you just created that you're going to be using to deploy your site, add permission and attach existing policies directly. and add the policy that you just created. Perfect. Now this GitHub Actions user will have access to deploy code to the S3 bucket. The next thing we need to do is head on over to GitHub in order to set up our repository and action. Alright, so let's open up GitHub in a new tab and create our repository for our front-end application. Go ahead and click New. Name your repository, whatever you like. You can create a public or private one, it does not matter. And then click Create Repository. Now that we have the repository made, we need to add it as a remote origin to a local project. I've gone ahead and created a React project locally using the npx create react app command. 
if you have any questions on that, please leave it in the comments and I'll answer it as quickly as possible. But I have created it locally, so I will go ahead and open the project in my text editor or IDE. So let's just add repo. and push the code. Now if we refresh our page, we should see our code here. Perfect. Now we need to set up the GitHub action. In order to do that, come into settings. And we actually need to add two secrets to the and this is where you'll need that CSV that you downloaded earlier from AWS containing the secrets for the GitHub Actions user that we created. Go ahead and add a new repository secret. This first one will be access key ID. And we'll copy our value there. Add secret. And the other one that we need to add is the AWS secret access key. And then copy your value into the box. Add secret. Now GitHub will be able to upload to our S3 bucket. So come into actions and you can set up a workflow yourself. It will provide you with a template that you can use. However, we can just copy paste hours that we already have. I will provide it as a link in the description. So we're going to upload our website this will happen on a push to the main branch and we are using the AWS secret access key ID and AWS secret access ID and we just need the bucket name so let's hop back over to AWS and grab our bucket name Just replace that here. Then we start commit. And that's looking good. Commit new file. We come back to the code. It should begin to run. I'm going to pause the recording and wait for this to finish. We can see that the GitHub action finished and we can see our new application using our custom domain from earlier to test that the GitHub action is working successfully we can make a simple change in our application and push the changes to see if it will deploy. We can come back to our repo.
we see that we have a new action running on that commit we just pushed up. And we'll just wait for it to finish. Now that the GitHub action is done running, we can come back to our site, hit refresh, and we should see the changes. And that's how you deploy a React application 2S3 using GitHub Actions and CloudFront as a CDN. Thank you very much. Look forward to the next one.